I'm Carl Derrick, I'm the Makeup Effects Supervisor of 1408. This is our, our willing victim, Paul Casey. Paul's quite a well-known creature performer. Um, he's done a lot of work on Doctor Who and shows like that. So we start off the application by putting this bald cap over. I think at this point I tell him he's done, which is why I start smiling. Uh, this is a vinyl cap and we do it to keep his hair out of the way. This is then trimmed down with a pair of scissors as you can see, just to make it fit a little bit better around his ears. This is the first stage in the makeup, then we get everything else gone, goes on over the top. This is a lycra balaclava, skin coloured lycra, which has the jaw piece, the jaw bone of the makeup on it. That's a rigid fiberglass piece. The purpose of the balaclava is really just to position the jaw bone exactly right. Once the jaw bone's in the right place, everything else in the makeup will register to it. See Paul helping out there, he's very cooperative like this. You can also see a little bit on his right hand of the blender on the underside of the arm. That's part of the hand makeup. We did the makeup which is full head in both hands. You can see uh, on that uh, bit of gluing going on there, we're gluing the lycra down to his skin. This will happen in several um, key places around the makeup. Once it's glued down in the correct position, we can lose the rest of the hood. We don't really need it. We just to help us get it in the right place to start with. There we go. So we cut all of that away, just leaving the jaw in place. Next piece to go on, you see a lot of people helping out here. That's Steve Scotton on the left and Deborah Hyde behind. That's me on the right. And Beam and Paul's helping, four of us. This is a cowl piece. This contains a rigid helmet, which is, represents the skull of Kevin O'Malley. This fits over Paul's own head. As you can see, it snugs down. It's been made on his life car, so it's nice and snug. So we've got the back of his neck, the front of his neck, the top of the head and everything is all included in one piece and this is pre-painted back at the workshop this saves us a lot of time in the chair so we just put this in that'll all be glued down later on make sure it's in the right place for Paul nice and comfortable for him we'll ask him all the time if it's okay oh the um, the phaser looking thing is very interesting that's uh, basically the the same material that the, the makeup's made of it's a silicon rubber is in two parts an A part and a B part in that tube and at the end of it is a static mixer nozzle and when we squeeze it down it mixes and comes out pre-mixed at the end. So we end up with uh, just a much cleaner system of just being able to go in and squirt it in when we need it and then push the makeup around and in a few minutes that'll go off and seal the makeup tightly to his skin. It's a very clean method. It's, I think it's the first time we've used this. You can see we're just pushing the makeup around, make sure everything's down nice and tight. He's going to be in it all day so we've got to be sure that it's properly seated. You can see the cut throat quite clearly there. Part of O'Malley's character was that he had his throat cut when he was originally killed in 1408. He actually killed himself. I'm explaining to Paul there, you see those weird hand gestures. That's about what explaining that there's a rigid helmet and I'm tapping it to show him that he's perfectly safe in there. You can see him saying, there's nothing in there, there's no one home. Um, that the, the uh, helmet does provide a, quite a large degree of protection for his head, which is handy. So he's in the shaft thrashing around. We thought it'd be good to give Paul something to eat before we ended up putting the rest of the face pieces on because it's much easier for him and it's easier for us. Here you can see me just going around, just gluing down all the tabs, just making sure everything's in place. We're going to put the top lip on now. Top lip and bottom lip are pieces that weren't pre-painted because they were too small. Um, what we'll do, we'll put those on, then paint, blend them in with paint onto the rest of the makeup. And you can see it looks like a big moustache. We're going to make sure that's in exactly the right place. That glues onto his lip and inside his mouth, just into the top of the lip. This is all medical grade materials, so they're perfectly safe. So the top lip's on, now we're going for the bottom lip, and that will register onto, from his bottom lip onto the jawbone, which is why it's so important to have that jawbone in the correct position. Here we go, a bit of glue underneath, glue it in, take lots of hands to hold it in place. make sure they're all firmly seated down. Then we can glue on the, the last piece of the makeup really, which is a big butterfly piece that goes across from the front of one ear, right across the front of his face, onto the front of the other ear. Taking in his nose, his cheeks, all, all the other bits that you can see that are him. And at this point, this is really where we lose Paul and we start to see O'Malley as, uh, as a final shape, as a character. Here we go. Seats on with the nose, we've got to make sure that's in the right place. So we fiddle around with that for a while, making sure that it fits around the nostrils correctly. You can see Deborah helping me hold it there in place while I put some more glue underneath. And again with the uh, static mixer, 
get plenty of glue behind there so we just squish it all out underneath and it forms a nice little seal, holds it right onto the face. So you can see positioning the cheek there, making it important that we get all the lines in the right place, everything ties up. And you can see the difference in colour between the top lip, the bottom lip and the rest of the makeup, they're quite pale in comparison. That colour you can see there is actually the same colour that the whole of the makeup was cast in. The rest of it's been painted, as I said, back in the shop and then sealed to make sure that their colour doesn't rub off. Here we go, really getting there now. You probably noticed how much lighter it's getting outside. I think we started this makeup at 5 a.m. Takes about two and a half hours. We'll do a full head in both hands. That includes the hair, which you'll see going on. Uh, includes the uh, both hands, full head, the hair, the, all the other colouring that has to happen. One thing you will notice about O'Malley is around his eyes, we don't glue it down around there at all. There's no glue goes around his eyes. The main reason for that is O'Malley always wears these glasses. Oh, hi, hello. O'Malley always wears these glasses that you, when you see him in the movie, he's never seen without them. And the only time we ever did anything with the eyes was for a real close up shot where you could see around the edge of the glasses where he's first discovered. Um, and for that, we needed to have some sort of dried up sort of skin around the eyes. So we, bit, we made something special in there for that. You can see me painting in. These are all from uh, the Skin Illustrator Dark Palette. This is a lovely color I'm putting on there. It's called Midnight Brown. O'Malley's basically four colors. He's the basic skin tone which the pieces are cast and you can still see the lower lips in that color. He's a color called Midnight Brown, Espresso 2 and Red Oxide. And those are the only colors that are painted on afterwards. You can see the parts of the rigid helmet showing through. Uh, the cheekbones, through a bit on the nose, bottom of the jaw there. And what we wanted to do with this, and I haven't heard of this being done before, is to put a rigid structure under the soft rubber so that it would move where it would move and it wouldn't move where it wouldn't. So if he furrows his brow, we get nothing, which is exactly right, because if the skin shrunk onto the brow, there wouldn't be any muscle underneath. So it's very important uh, to me that the brow doesn't bend and the face is completely rigid. Paul's a great, uh, a great physical actor. And his, when you see the movie, you'll see that the whole of the, the O'Malley character, the physicality of it is all Paul, the way he moves his face, the angle of his head, the, uh, the movement of his, his body and his legs and the way he moves around, it all very much expresses the way O'Malley is. You can see, here we go a little bit more. Painting in the details, these are all the splits and cracks in the skin. These were painted in with red oxide, which gives a slightly sort of raw look, I suppose, but without it looking bloody, we wanted him to be dried up, not gory. You see Steve working on the hand there in the foreground. All happened to happen, had to happen together. We had to make sure that the hands and the, the head happened together, otherwise it would have been a five hour makeup. We we're just painting in lots of the details and blend away those colors. As Deborah's doing a bit of uh, gluing down the back of the, the seam where it uh, meets his skin behind the ear. There's me just finishing in the last of the details on the head. It's quite a lot of this. See the sun's quite high now in the background. We're getting quite close to the end. Here we go around the other side, finish off the last of those. He has these splits in his head all the way around where the skin's you know, dried up. He's been in this ventilation shaft for 80 years, just drying out. You'll see he's, uh, he's leaned forward a bit there. You can see a bit more of the detail. Here we go, there's a bit of glue going on there. We're gonna put some, some hair on him now. The hairs are two colors that we blended for O'Malley. One is uh, quite an auburn color, which is like Paul's natural hair, because we see him a couple of times in the film in photographs of the, um, the death scene. <clears throat> once in another sequence and so we had a, a, a grayed out version of the hair and we had a, a nice auburn version of the hair and we mixed those colors in so you had a, a mixture of those two. You can see I'm laying the hair on and layers up the head and then I'll give it a little trim. You can see just trim with the scissors there and you can see how the whole character's shaping up now. The last thing that happens is he gets dusted in. You can probably see some, some dust on him already. The reason he, he differs from shot to shot is we, this is two applications that have been uh, cut together. One was from the left side of the mirror and one was from the right side of the mirror. And one we had his costume shirt on and one we didn't. See Steve's nearly finished the hand there. And so we just pat the hair down. Normally wouldn't do this for a creature because you want the hair to stand up, but you can see from here it's very important. It just sort of follows the contour of his head. It's just the last wispy sort of strands of hair that are left after the rest of it's fallen out. He's dried out in the shaft. 
Paul's very patient, he's a really good guy to work with. Never complains. It gets pretty tiring for the actor as well as for us. We, where are we doing that? Oh, a bit of dust going on there, here we go. It's the last sort of touch for O'Malley. Don't want to dust him too much because it just covers everything up, but you get an idea of the dust having just settled on him over the years, so we're just gently sort of dusting him down. And where you have a natural shelf or a ledge, we have the cheekbone, we a little bit of dust will accumulate in there, and then maybe the top of the ears or a high point. Bit of a stretch for Paul, here we go. It's got to be nearly done now. See, the sun's quite bright. The rest of the crew is just coming in now, so they're all getting ready for us on set. So we make sure Paul's done, that's it. There we go.